So what if we knew the point of origin to deception? Could that be the place where we attack a subject's lie? So if you really knew the point of origin where a person is really the creating or the birth of his, of his deception, could that be the point that we want to attack as the interviewer? Hi, Stan Walters, back with you again on the Lie Guy channel. Visiting some great folks here at the First Special Forces in Fort Lewis and Washington. And we've been talking about deception behaviors. In particular, what about different cultural groups or different languages? I think that, in my opinion, I've been doing some research, and I think the real origin of deception when we're interviewing, we're, we're spending too much time on the emotional side. I think there's something behind that, almost like a firewall. We're looking at before they get the emotional and cognitive response, and it's where is the birthplace of deception in the first place. There's a behavior that, that Festinger, a psychologist, wrote about in 1957 called cognitive dissonance. And his theory was that the mind and the brain likes things orderly. They like things structured. And so brain tries to keep everything into balance. It's called action opinion theory. So what happens if I engage in an activity that one, my actions are in conflict with my belief system? And so that inconsistency, the mind's got to figure out a way to resolve that conflict. Now the brain does that in three ways. One, we adjust our belief system to justify the action. And you can see that in here in the interview room where the subject tries to explain away their actions, why it's okay, why it's approved, and why they feel they're all right for what they've done. Or they can change the action. They readjust their actions to meet their belief system and sometimes overcompensate. And so now instead of being the person who cheats on the exam, I'm the one who goes out and proctors people to make sure they don't cheat and I'm like the hawk, I hang right over them. I think the point though that interrogators need to look at is the third piece of the puzzle. And that's when the individual starts to rationalize or to adjust their description or the perception of what happened. That's where I believe we need to attack. So this is behind or beyond that emotional response. So when the brain has this inconsistency, there is an incongruence, there is a dissonance, there is a noise in thinking. Cognitive dissonance has been described as being of two minds. What is your subject doing? Here is their reality of what they've experienced with a very complex grid of details, emotions, of cognitive process, of sight, sound, taste, touch, smell, all that embedded. But I've got to create this parallel uh, fantasy, this parallel adaption of part of the story, censoring parts and creating parts that don't exist. All I have to do as the interviewer is find that spot. And my questions are focused on that topic and I'm raising the cognitive load, raising the pressure on the subject to sustain that substitute reality versus what their mind, their emotions, and their cognitive process is telling them actually went on. So as I pick the question, and they don't have to be hostile or be aggressive, just find those topics and ask questions about, well, why is there an incongruence? So all I have to do is find that spot where there's a distinct difference between the reality and the fiction this person has created. That's the source of it. And so getting behind that firewall, so I don't have to talk about right and wrong, don't have to talk about I believe or don't believe, it's creating that dissonance, that noise, that causes the subject to be of two minds. That's the place I have to find, find those topics. Check me again, right down right here, hit the subscribe to join the YouTube channel, connect with me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Hope to see you again in the next episode of the Lie Guy channel. Be safe, thanks for tuning in.